Hi, people. Mm. Mm. Oh, sorry, I'm feeling a little bit rough. Uh, if you can't tell, I've been outside. You see the red in my cheeks. Uh, I walked. Where did I walk to today? I don't. I don't remember where, where I walked to. I walked to a few different places. Uh, I walked to the school to use their libraries, and for whatever reason, I was having a hard time paying attention to use the, the computers at the library but was having a difficult time paying attention so I decided while I was out I would walk to social services to apply for food stamps and it was about all together I think it was like six miles like to get there and then come back uh, I didn't apply and that's just because they told me I could do it online, which I already knew I could do. But I wanted to ask them about uh, energy assistance also, because I live in a bus where I don't have a good energy source. Aside from that thing up there called the sun, uh, which I currently use for electricity, but I don't have adequate... I don't have an adequate amount of uh, panels and batteries and things like that to use it uh, like a regular house I don't know <laughs> what you would call that uh, I don't need a regular house's amount of electricity but I can't like I can't get a refrigerator right I can't use a refrigerator because it uses too much electricity uh, even my computer I have a desktop computer which I don't use currently if I want to use the, like I have a laptop a tablet uh, a laptop and a tablet if I want to use those I just go to a nearby restaurant like Culver's or, or Wendy's or Starbucks or something like that and I use their Wi-Fi and their power and uh, that works uh, I don't for computer and things like that I don't need like a constant power supply it would be nice especially if I want to get a job uh, if I get a full-time job, say is even a, a help desk, uh, it would be good to have enough power that I can sit here for eight hours a day and not worry about the power shutting off. So a generator would help with that too, but uh, I don't have a job, so I can't buy gas. So. This is one of the reasons why I feel rough at the moment, is just this kind of stress of financial insecurity stress. Uh, but I'm in a position where I almost don't need a job. I, I'm, I don't, don't, I'm like, I get free food from food banks, I get, like I said, a little bit of free electricity already. Uh, if I want to use, like I said, if I want to use my laptop or tablet, I just go up to a restaurant. The, of course, I, ha I am limited to when they're open. Uh, they're not open 24 hours, and uh, I don't like to sit in there for 8 hours at a time either. Uh, but uh, I, I am pretty close to not needing a job at all. And... Uh, But I'm not quite there, and there is a little, there is a little bit of like panic, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I like I went to the food bank last. The thing I like with the food banks is you don't get uh, uh, like you can't order your food, right? You don't get to go there and pick. You kind of have to take whatever they give you. At least at the ones that I go to. Uh, they, they just have like, they just fill up like a box or whatever and they give you the box and, uh, uh, so the last trip wasn't, it was a good haul, I'll put it that way, but it was, when I saw it I thought, I don't know if I can make it a month on this. And, 
So it's like, well, I probably am going to need food stamps. And I have this van sitting out here that uh, has a loan on the title. Which basically means that I, I needed the loan. And the only way to get the loan was to use the title of my van to, to get the loan. and Which means that I have to pay back the loan or I lose my van. And uh, I haven't paid back the loan. I, I'm, not, I'm not even 50% of the way through. And... Uh, that scares me right because i don't want to like come back from a, a walk a six mile walk one day or even a two mile walk and and get back here and see my van is missing of course i don't know if it's legal for them to take my van without telling me about it first i'm not sure about that but uh and then the thing that's on my mind though not just the 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 financial insecurity but the family situation has been on my mind for a while and that is I'm not even sure what to say about that uh, I am not sure what to say about that uh, partly because I'm not sure what to do about it uh, the, the family situation is just like blackout it's just a communication blackout where like I literally am a hundred yards from the family business like I, I'm looking out the window here and I can look straight across to my, the family business shop right over there uh, just two hours ago they were at work it's about six o'clock right now and about two hours ago they were at work and I could see people walking around out here I was I was sitting in the bus uh, but there's no communication. And I don't mean to say that they're not communicating with me and I'm trying, I'm, I'm like, hey, 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 talk to me. Uh, there's just no communication one way or the other. I, I feel like for me, it's better just to stay, keep my distance. Uh, and for them, I guess it's the same way. There's just no, there seems to be an inter, irre, irreconcilable uh, difference here uh, and as far as I can tell it is the trans thing where it's like they they're it's like almost like a battle a battle of wills kind of thing where it's like they don't want to accept it and I don't want to be a part of a family that doesn't accept it if that makes sense like I don't want to all right, well, you know, I'll dress as a man, and and you know, you guys get your way. You know, and they're from their perspective, it's like, well, we don't want to let you over here as a woman, and let you, because you know, we want to have our way, kind of thing. Does that make sense? Did I say that the right way? But uh, no, I didn't say that the right way. But anyways, hopefully you get the idea. What I meant to say was, okay, we'll, we'll let you come over here as a trans, and we'll let you have your way. Uh, I mean, I, I, I injured my my thumb. I injured my thumb when I was cooking my meal. I don't know how I did it. Am I a sissy? Am I a sissy? Am I a sissy girl? A sissy trans? I hurt my finger. Uh, what to talk about? What to talk about? Uh, uh, the other part of that is the, the fact that they're could be work there for me that uh that's part of the problem for me as far as like the kind of this uh mental turmoil is uh i was working for my father and the work that i was doing for him he basically took it away one piece at a time and made it unavailable to me uh, I was doing several different things for him, like permit applications, pool drawings, site evaluations. 
and things like that. And he basically just took all that and said, here's, you know, here's site evaluations he gave it to somebody else. Permit applications he gave to somebody else. And, uh, I don't mean to say that I was working there when he did that. Uh, I did leave. I went, I went to go to Home Depot and, uh, I got a job at Home Depot, and then he offered me a job uh, while I was out, uh, you know, like I was no longer living here. And uh, while I was no longer living here, he called me up and said that he had a job for me, and it was doing the permit applications. And uh, when I got back up here, that's when I found out he already had somebody else doing it. And he said, yeah, no, I don't have it, you know, you're not going to do that. And I was like, uh, what is going on here? Uh, uh, so, yeah, he tried to, we, he came up with this idea that, uh, you know, I'll just hang out at the shop and just do things. And, uh, I didn't, I didn't like that idea. Uh, that was not even close to what I had asked for. What I had asked for was to get paid to do something like permit applications or pool drawings or whatever. Uh, the problem I had with that initially, when I was doing that before, was that he was paying me for a week, right? It's like a week's salary. And some people might say, what's wrong with that? Uh, it wasn't a week's worth of work. That was the problem that I had. It was... You know, I'm getting paid essentially for 40 hours worth of work, uh, but only doing four to five hours of work per week, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, and so I don't like, I don't like feeling like I'm cheating somebody, but I also feel like I have better uses of that time. You know, if I'm, if I'm only actually doing four to five hours of work per week I don't know if it was that was the right number uh, but uh, I wasn't I mean the rest of the time I was basically just looking for things to do to stay busy right uh, but if I'm working four to five four to five hours per week uh, there's really no reason to be paying me there's no reason for me to be looking for things to do to stay busy when if you could just pay me for the jobs that I've done instead of by the hour right especially if you're going to pay me by the hour when I wasn't working for the entire 40 hours or if I was just doing busy work right like what's the point of having someone you know you know like me there anyways uh, so I didn't like the I didn't like the whole thing of getting a bunch of money and then basically being told just give me my money's worth and that is there's two there's different reasons for that uh, one is the negativity since I've been back from Atlanta it's just been non-stop negativity and uh, as far as the working relationship uh, at work it was like it was just constant complaining. It was like every time I saw my father, if he came to me to talk about something, it was nine times out of ten it was a problem. And uh, so in situations like that, I don't want unclear communication. Like I don't want a job where someone gives me money and just says, give me my money's worth. Because I don't know what your money's worth is, right? And... If you're in this state of mind where you're looking for excuses to to criticize me and complain, I don't want a job where that's 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 the the extent of the communication. I'm I'm happy to have a job where I get I get the freedom to take initiative and take responsibility, uh, but I don't want a job where my employer is giving me enough rope to hang myself, right? Uh, because that's what they want. And that's that was the impression that I got was that basically he was he was giving me enough rope he wanted me to hang myself he was hoping for me to he didn't he wasn't even hoping for me to fuck up because he did, I don't need to fuck up all he has to do is make up something that I am not doing which is what he did and uh, 
uh, he would come to me and criticize me for things that weren't even real. Uh, and when I say not real, I mean he would say he said he would come to me and say things like, "Well, so and so said you're not doing this or that," and I'm like, "This or that? What is this or that? That's not a real. That's not a real thing, right? You're you're complaining about." A, a, an imaginary thing here. Uh, you know, it's like, well, if you want me to do this or that, then just tell me what this or that is and that you want me to do it and I'll do it. Uh, but, uh, so this was, this was the, one of the reasons why I wanted the pay me for the job, right? If I do a permit application, just pay me for the permit application. We'll just come into an agreement Maybe a permit application is worth a hundred bucks, right? So if I do a permit application, just give me a hundred bucks for the permit application. So, but he didn't like that, and uh, he tried to get me back into a job where I was basically he was giving me money, and I was supposed to give him his money's worth. And uh, uh, he tried to get me into that, and I refused. And so then he put me on call. Uh, basically, he gave me a small amount of money just to hang out here, and that turned into the same thing where it was like, well, now he's he's upset because I'm I'm still not doing things that that whatever it is he wants me to do that he just doesn't want to tell me that he wants me to do, and uh, so it, he took that away. And uh, because he said that's what that wasn't working for him, but apparently it was because I wasn't I wasn't taking initiative and in doing things that you know that needed to be done, uh, even though I specifically stated when he when he offered me that that I don't want to hang out here and look for things to do. You know, if you, if there are things you want me to do, tell me what they are. Uh, But, uh, so he eventually took that away, and then he later, uh, after I went and got a job somewhere else, came up with the idea of having me do a technical drawing for the pool installers, uh, which is, uh, it's like a blueprint, it, uh, very similar to a blueprint, uh, maybe you could call it a blueprint, uh, basically... The idea is he's going to buy a big format printer, like a two foot wide printer, where he can print out these drawings, give it to the, the pool installers, and they can use it for when they go to do the pool installation job. It shows the dimensions of the pool. Uh, it breaks down the dimensions of the pool so they can, when they dig the hole, they know, you know, they know all the dimensions. And then it also shows the relationship to the house and the property. So if the pool is 30 feet from the house, it shows that sort of thing, and and I'm like, yeah, this this is uh this is this is enjoyable kind of work. It's not my dream job, but it's better than digging with a shovel, right? Uh, so he he had me do three of those, and then he took that away, and uh, uh, he also offered to to have me do a Microsoft Excel automation. He wanted, he uses Microsoft Excel as pretty much any kind of business like this should be. I don't mean, I don't mean they should be using Excel, but they probably have some kind of spreadsheet. And uh, he wanted to automate it. And uh, so I was looking at different solutions that I was telling him about the solutions and he's like, yeah, no, don't, don't worry about that. I'm not going to do that. And, uh, so basically now, now I'm down to zero, right? There's nothing, he has no work for me to do at all. But he keeps hinting at the idea that he has a pool installer job, uh, meaning the, like the, the physical labor, like I would go to the, the pool place and help the install crew. Uh, cause I asked him once if he had work and he said, well, it's, I do, but it's not the kind of work you like or something like that. And I said, well, I said that, you know, I asked you if you had work. That's, the, that was the question. And, uh, he said, well, I do, but not the kind of work you like. And, you know, and, uh, so w there was, for me, I thought, well, maybe that's better than nothing. 
but when I feel like I'm I'm being corralled into something like that by someone who's already shown me that they have an interest in punishing me, uh, I'm hesitant to take a, a job like that. Right? I'm a little bit like, well, because if I were to do that job, then I would be working with him, you know, constantly, and I would be working under my brothers. Uh, who he has, uh, you might say that when it's my father and my brothers and I all in one room, it's, it's a four against one, uh, situation. Uh, and I do mean that it's, it's the four of them against me. And, uh, fortunately for me, <laughs> uh, that, uh, you know, I, I might be the most articulate one in the room, I'll put it that way. Uh, that, uh, maybe not articulate is, the, is a good way to put it, but, uh, uh, we have a lot of arguments. And, uh, I hold my own, I'll put it that way. But it's not, at the same time, it's the sort of thing where I'm like, I don't want to go to work. I don't want my source of income to be a situation where I might go to work on a daily basis and end up in an argument against four other people, right? Especially if it's something like, let's just say I go to work and uh, one of my brothers decides now that he's my boss, that, that he gets to talk to me like I'm some kind of dog, right? And it turns into a fight, right? And then it's four against one and everybody's basically saying, you need to learn your place, right? I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, that doesn't sound like an ideal, that doesn't sound, I, I don't want to say that I'm looking for an ideal job, uh, but that doesn't sound like a healthy place to be for one. Uh, this, at the same time, I'm a little bit like, uh, part of where the confusion comes from for me is I see that as a potentially hazardous, unhealthy uh, situation to be in but because of a lot of the things that I've been reading like stoic philosophy uh, even the Bible I look at that situation and, and I think maybe that's the place for me to be you know maybe maybe that's where maybe that's the uh, the monster that I have to fight When I think, there are a lot of times when I think, yeah, you know what, I think I might actually want that job. Because I, I would be basically under my three younger brothers. I have three brothers who are all younger than me. And I would be the new guy, right? Um, I would be the lowest on the totem pole. After basically a lifetime. I wouldn't say that I was on top of the totem pole as a brother. Uh, that's partly because I was the one who was always absence I was always gone off doing something else and basically kept to myself and that sort of thing anyways when I was with the family uh, but now it is a situation where uh, there there could be a coup you know a coup a coup against the the, uh, the position. I, w I wouldn't say that I was at the top of the totem pole, but being the older brother certainly had its kind of privilege. <laughs> like people talk about like male privilege and that sort of thing, uh, or white privilege or whatever. There's, there is such a thing as older brother privilege, or oldest brother privilege, I should say, maybe. Uh, and... Uh, Especially when I'm going through a gender change, right? Uh, I don't really want to say that I'm changing genders. I'm going through an experiment. This is, this is all one experiment, right? Uh, to kind of find out who I am. And when I'm in this, this kind of experiment, uh, where I'm trying to 
get in touch with my feminine side and 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 it kind of em, uh, embrace the the softer more uh dare I say passive uh aspects of my identity to be in a situation where there are basically four people who are hungry to I don't want to say put me in my place, uh, but uh, to assert their dominance, maybe, uh, is a good way to put it. Uh, to not be on the bottom, right? I have one of those families where it's, it's like the, the, the objective of everybody is to be on top. Everybody wants to be on top. No, nobody wants to be that the the, the the woman nobody wants to be the woman uh, I'm not even entirely sure what I'm saying is it the woman or the loser nobody wants to be the loser but, but in some way it's the same thing And so that's one of the reasons why I almost feel the need to take the job uh, is to, I'm not sure what to do about it. Uh, because there is a part of me that thinks that I need to prove that being a woman is not a bad thing. Right? Does that make sense? Uh, that being cooperative and being a peacemaker and uh, that sort of thing is not a bad thing. Even if that means taking orders, right? from people who I feel like should not be giving me orders, but, uh, or is that how it should go? Or should I, you know, if I were to take the job, should I try to assert my dominance? And should I try to be like, you know, fuck all you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm the queen here. Maybe I should do that if I get the job. Just go to work and be like, eh. uh. "Hi." Oh, I, I don't. I don't know what it is, but here lately, every time I have an orgasm, I, I feel the need to pop my neck. And there seems to be a, a kind of connection between the quality of the orgasm and my ability to, to relieve this, whatever you want to call it, tension, crick. It's like, a, it's like my, my neck feels like it's just kind of old and rusty or something. And it's like, it just needs to be kind of loosened up and, you know. But if I start having an orgasm, I start going like, uh, 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 uh. and if I don't get it, then my orgasm is is, is just dull and uh, not all that great. Uh, but if I get it, it knocks the orgasm up a little bit. <laughs> uh, 
Oh my god. Uh. Hi. Uh. Did I say everything I meant to say? Should I get rid of my mustache? If I just show that part of my face, I feel like I have a somewhat feminine face. It almost looks like my chin got smaller, actually. I swear I had a bigger chin in the past. Maybe it's just the camera. I still have a big, big jaw. See my mirror? My new mirror? Say hi, mirror. Oh, me. Yeah, this it is. is I'm at a time in my life where uh, I'm tired of feeling like. My life is determined by external circumstances. I don't know how else to put it. Uh, I feel like in the last two years that this is really the first time probably no This has been a very gradual process. So I can't ex say exactly when it started. Uh, but it's been kind of just this gradual shift towards me putting my hands on the wheel of my own life. Instead of just being like, you know... I talked about this in the video about living deliberately, which I recorded probably almost a year ago. Uh, I don't think it was a year ago. Uh, but, uh, maybe six or seven months ago, but it was about this idea of, you know, like, not just the knee-jerk reaction, like, right now I don't have a job, right? And in the past, it was just like a, just a knee-jerk reaction. It was like, well, I don't have a job, I need to go find a job. Well, do I really... Do I really need to go find a job, or is maybe is there another solution? You know, uh, this is what I'm talking about, where it's just like, I'm not really paying attention. It's like I'm just, uh, it's like I'm just going for the, the, the first, the first thought that comes to my mind is like that. That's what we're doing. And so now I'm, I'm in a position where I deliberate on things for sometimes months at a time. Uh, uh, that's one of the reasons why my bus is not finished. Uh, I, even buying the bus was a little bit of a kind of spontaneous thing. And that's partly because when I saw it, I thought that's my bus. Uh, but also because it was very close by. It was only uh, like a 20 minute drive from where I'm at now. And I thought, if I don't jump on this, I'm not going to get a bus. And, uh, but since I bought it, there were certain things that I felt like I knew I wanted to do. And there were other things where I just kind of felt like, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to sit on this. I'm not going to hurry up. I'm not going to rush this and feel like, well, you know, I, I need to get it done. Well, do I really need to get it done or do I need to do it right? You know, uh, these, these are the, this is kind of what I'm talking about. And for me, I, f I find that that works better. Even if I don't get things done, the bus is not finished, but I don't care. Uh, I, I don't feel like it's that important that I get it finished. I feel like it's more important that I, that I, I would rather build it once right, than build it three or four times. Of course, I'm not opposed to building it three or four times. 
you know. I'm okay with making mistakes, but I don't I don't want to make stupid mistakes. Uh, because I couldn't wait. Uh, so right now I'm in this very much like just questioning things like do I need a job? Especially as a trans person who is, you know, if you can't tell by my face, I've been on hormones now for about a year and a half, you know. I have boobs. I have naturally grown boobs. I mean... And uh, so, yeah, for someone like me, I feel like maybe going the traditional route. This probably could be why I'm in this position that I'm t just talking about, right? <laughs> this is the fact that I can't just go anywhere and get a job anymore. In the past, I could just go anywhere I wanted, it, you know. I would just basically just drive around town and look for now hiring signs. And then I could go into the place and typically, if they were hiring, I could just go inside and, and say, hey, I want a job. And they would give me an application. I would fill it out. And I would get the job a lot of times on the spot. And uh, I can't do that anymore. So part of that is maybe my age. Part of that is now that people do the, do this online stuff. Uh, and maybe it, they also have a hundred times more applications than they did in the past because of the online thing. I don't know. But... Uh, yeah, it doesn't work that way. I can't just I can't just drive around town anymore and, and look for now hiring signs and expect to get a job. And so of course, that's part of it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I am trying to get into that. Do I need a job? Here, here soon. I'm, if I if I can lose my belly, maybe I can do it even without losing the belly. Look at uh oh. I was just about talking about making porn videos, but I don't know if I can make a porn video with that. Look at that tan. What am I gonna do? I got I, I can't make a porn video like that. Anyways. gonna say I forgot what I was gonna say what was I gonna say hello goodbye I was talking about living deliberately but I didn't really have a point I, I don't really know where I was going with that I was just kind of hoping to talk about something but uh, drats what 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 should is there something I should talk about here? Is there something I should talk about? I like this lighting. I, I want to take advantage of this lighting and talk about something really special. Uh... uh. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if there's anything really special, but what, what's coming to my mind, though, is, is the whole thing of, of uh, the, maybe the hardest part uh, of, uh, of the transition is the, is the vulnerability or feeling vulnerable or just the idea of, uh, you know, thinking that I need to allow myself to be vulnerable, but in being in a place like I just described, where it is almost in a way, I feel almost, I imagine, I'm not going to say I feel the same way that Jesus felt, uh, but it is almost like there's these people over here who want to nail me to a cross. <laughs> so, and there's that, there's that thing in my head that's saying, 
you have to be willing to be nailed to a cross to, in order to get to where you need to go you have to be willing to be nailed to a cross right and uh, that's that for me is the hard part uh, and it is uh, like the whole thing of putting down my weapons right putting down my defenses and and just saying you know the world needs people to put down their weapons right uh, I remember being in Atlanta working at the uh, uh, I was working at the VA hospital in the shipping and receiving department and I was the only white person who worked there and uh, it was just a little bit unusual for me to hear some of the conversations uh, that I heard Typically, like if I was in a, what I might call a normal uh, mix of people, I probably would not have heard these conversations. Maybe I would have, I don't know. Uh, there weren't really that many bizarre conversations, but there was one in particular that I remember where I just, I remember thinking, I don't think I would have heard this in a, uh, uh, like a, a group of white people. Maybe I would have, but, uh, but anyways... Uh, what they were talking about was the need to carry a gun and uh, it seemed like pretty much every guy there all black was they were all in agreement that you have to carry a gun uh, I don't carry a gun I don't own a gun uh, one of the reasons why I don't own a gun is because I would I'd be too tempted to kill myself if I had one uh, but the other reason why I don't own a gun is because I feel like that exacerbates the problem, right? Uh, the more people feel the need to carry a gun, the more it makes people feel the need to carry a gun. I mean, if you're in a room of, of five people and you know that three of them have a gun and maybe you don't trust them, uh, then it's probably going to make you feel the need to go get a gun, right? And that was that was what I was thinking when I was hearing these guys talk. I thought, basically, what you're doing is you're you're strengthening the problem, right? If the problem is that the world is unsafe because people out there have guns, uh, then everybody rushing out to get a gun makes it worse, right? course what I'm talking about in my situation is not about guns right it's just more of like an emotional uh, just interacting with people on a day-to-day -day basis right and uh, being able to interact in a way uh, where it's like you can metaphorically speaking put your guns down and say you know if you want to attack me fine it's like that, that the verse from the Bible, if someone strikes you in the cheek, turn the other cheek so they can strike it also. Uh, going through this gender thing, I feel like that's, for me, that's a mandatory uh, thing to look at or to contemplate because... Uh, Physically speaking, uh, I'm not as strong as I used to be, right? Uh, I can't... If it turns into having to resolve a conflict with, with fisticuffs, uh, then I feel like I'm, you know, I'm going to have to do something else, right? <laughs> Maybe I could take a karate class or, you know, carry pepper spray with me or something like that. Uh, but... Uh, I'm almost got the light right where I want it. I almost got the light right where I want it. I almost got the light, except now the shadow's right on my face if I do that. That's kind of sexy right there, right? A little bit. I got I got the uh, 
the uh, the ninja. What do you call it? <laughs> Anyways, I think I've said enough. What time is it? 45 minutes I've been talking. 45 minutes? I just got wet.